Thank you, General, General Barrier, for those opening remarks. Our next speaker is Lieutenant General Kevin Kennedy, Commander of the 16th Air Force, Commander of Air Forces Cyber, and Commander of Joint Force Headquarters Cyber at Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas. Lieutenant General Kennedy assumed this role in July of 2022. Please join me in welcoming General Kennedy. All right, well, thank you. So I have a son that plays baseball, and he always has these walk-up songs. They came up and said, hey, what do you want for a walk-up song? And I'm from New England, so I'm like, when am I going to ever get that chance again? So <laughs> went with Dropkick Murphys. Um, so first of all, thank you for the opportunity to talk um, today and to, and to meet with everyone that's here. Uh, Mr. Casa, thank you very much. Uh, how about another round of applause? Uh, Scott Barrier is a great teammate, great partner. Thank you very much for your service. Prior to this position, I was the J3 at Cyber Command, and we were a demanding customer, so Scott was very, very helpful in our mission as we go forward there. So I'm going to hear today, I'm going to represent the 49,000 airmen that are part of 16th Air Force and the total force. Um, but rather than getting detailing for you, um, first I had a less of a budget than DIA did, but I'm going to let you, I'm going to let the airmen show you what they do. So please roll the video. The world we live in today is smaller. Global connectivity allows people, societies, economies, and countries to interact at the speed of light. Our adversaries leverage this connectivity. They spread disinformation, target transparent, free, and open societies to stoke chaos, fear, and division. They erode trust by exploiting the vulnerabilities in our interconnected world. The information environment that touches every aspect of our lives. The information environment is our battle space, and 16th Air Force is the competition force. Our empowered airmen generate insights to connect our forces, hunt, expose, disrupt, and defeat our enemies, and deliver outcomes for our nation. Dominant in competition, vital in crisis, and a critical enabler in conflict, we are 16th Air Force. The men and women of 16th Air Force are persistently engaged, competing with the power of information, and protecting our nation daily. Working by, with, and through the interagency and our allies and partners, 16th Air Force reveals to deter, conceals to defeat, and exposes to gain the advantage over malign actors across the globe. We connect our force. We assure air superiority, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, rapid global mobility, global strike, and command and control. We arm national decision makers with the information that drives U.S. posture and response. Activities during competition are critical to integrated deterrence, which is the ultimate informational outcome. The Air Force's competition force is a tightly integrated collection of empowered airmen, our most critical capability operating across the globe. But we are most effective when we integrate and synchronize our capabilities scaling our information and expertise across the enterprise to affect adversary behavior at the time of our choosing. Empowered airmen delivering outcomes for the nation. Sixteenth Air Force is the competition force. External world premiere of that video there, so we, we brought it out just for you guys. So thank you. All right, next slide, please. So we'll talk today. They teed up a little bit. Here's our mission, and, and what I want to focus on is the center of the slide here. So our, our our mission is to generate insights, compete now, and prepare for crisis and conflict. Those are the efforts that we do. And when we talk about that, this is like how do we posture the Air Force enterprise to enable our CFAX and the combatant commands. So 16th Air Force, we also support the Joint Force um, through Cyber Command as the Air Force component, and we also support STRATCOM, SPACECOM, and UCOM. So we have, our team is aligned to that way and down in San Antonio, but we're able to leverage our enterprises that have come together in this singular NAF from the 24th Air Force and the 25th Air Force. What that did is it brought together our cyber enterprise, our ISR enterprise, our weather enterprise, portions of our EWF enterprise, and the greatest preponderance of our IO professionals that we've trained in information operations. What that enables uh, those empowered airmen to do is deliver outcomes that are executable in competition 
and as we prepare for crisis and conflict. And that's, we also have that very, very key that the information that we partner with DIA, NGA, um, and the other agencies um, to provide those insights for decision makers at the national level. Next slide, please. So let's talk about a little bit of what that information environment looks like that our airmen operate in. And so this is like what's changed. We've talked about, I, I completely agree with General Barrier, this feels like the 80s in, the, in just the tensions between the, the powers and, and moving forward from where we were in the past couple of decades. However, the, the environment's changed significantly. Right, so when I joined the force 1986 at the Air Force Academy, we were the first class with a PC. Um, since that time, we have become incredibly connected across the globe. And what does that mean for the military force? It means that we can communicate with the, field, with the population of other nations directly, and they can, complete, they can communicate with us. So we need to understand, not be scared of that, but we need to understand what that means and as we're leveraging the information environment. The other one is proliferated. As you look there, those are the adoption stats in the cost of the United States. 90% market type of adoption. Every, for the most part, 90% of our citizens in the United States will touch the internet every day. And if you put reminders, you know, I get a screen time thing, apparently 10 to 12 hours a week um, as you're going forward in that type of activity. So we are deeply uh, connected and it's proliferated across our population. It's also proliferated to our, ally, um, to our adversaries as you think through that. What does that mean? If you look at some of the, if you look at the colonial pipeline, cyber hack that happened oh, almost two years ago now, maybe a little over. Um, that wasn't a deeply technical operation. It was the availability of, of dark web marketplaces that sell access, that sell access, that provide opportunities to work with ransomware activities. Um, so for the fairly low dollar value, you could probably affect a company that had the access on the web um, with very, with you know, what I would call basic level um, cyber awareness and skills. So that's what we have to compete against of understanding this is the type of proliferation. It's really democratization of the technology across to impact our populations. And the other one is there's persistence. It's always on. It's always there. Much like the, the video talked about in the beginning, it's, it's, it's something that drives the information environment. Disconnecting is, is a choice that you have to make, otherwise you will continually be connected, our population will, our military members will, and we need to make sure that we understand that as we're going forward in great power competition. Next slide. So what advantage do you gain? This I don't think was an accident that they look so similar as we're going forward. So there's real advantage that our adversaries can gain in the competition space. Now ours is better. Right? The F-22 Raptor is still the finest air superior platform that has been fielded in the history of the world. However, when you look at the J-35, there's some capabilities there as you look forward. And like I said, it doesn't look similar by accident. And so what we've seen over the last couple of decades is that access, that persistence, and the proliferation of the technologies has enabled our adversaries to gain some strategic and operational advantage. What would that mean if we were to get into a hot crisis or conflict? We'd play it out. I, I am more confident in our ability to employ those capabilities, but I don't want to give the adversary further advantage. And so when we're thinking about our information, this is the reason why we have to have the level of security that we do when we all partner together on JWIX. This is the reason when we're working with the defense industrial base that we have fairly high security standards to make sure that we don't leak this type of information to our adversaries. Next slide, please. So what, is, uh, what we're gonna talk through here in the next couple of slides is the three things as you're talking about bringing clarity um, to chaos and how we're postured in 16th Air Force and what we see. So the first one is talked about the environment. The second one is here is what's the power of information sharing and where you gain. And for the Russia-Ukraine crisis, as I mentioned, I was at Cyber Command when the crisis started, and then I moved transition in this role and still continue to support UCOM today as the Joint Force Headquarters Commander um, for Cyber Air Force. And so what we saw there is the information sharing enabled us to build a coalition, enabled a defense um, for one of our partners, and then once, the, once Russia invaded Ukraine, it enabled us to share information at a level and speed that enabled Ukraine to defend themselves actively uh, during the actual conflict and continues to this day. That is one of the power. Now, that what is, what's required below that? Again, going back to the information technology we're gonna leverage, we have to have confidence in the networks and we have to have confidence in the means that we share the information 
that the information is going to remain secure with our partners and allies. And we're going to have to do this in competition to make sure that we're postured in a way to succeed. In a crisis, we figure this out. We have to move left, and we think through the technologies. And I think the technologies are getting there to a point um, where we can work together with our partners and allies to make sure that level of information sharing, which we've usually waited till crisis and conflict as we look through the, to the new environment, that's not going to be fast enough. Next slide. The other thing that brings us is resilience through partnerships. Right? Well, if you think about how where this is a, a, a conflict or a competition in the information environment, the more partnerships that you have, the more voices that you have in the information environment, the more folks that are operating inside that environment that have like ideals, like values, like interests, is going to help as you're taking out the disinformation and misinformation that's present in the environment. This is just an example from the Russia-Ukraine. We saw this. The more that the NATO, this the other byproduct of the Russia-Ukraine invasion, is NATO, I think, is stronger than it's been um, since the fall of the Cold War. This is what information can do for us. Next slide. So how do we posture ourselves within 16th Air Force? So we already talked about that. So the, the way that we're going to succeed in the future, and, if, and when we think about the crisis and conflicts that come, there are three kind of critical things that we look at in 16th Air Force that we need to do. First one, partners and allies. It's captured in the national defense strategy. It is also very, very true at the operational and tactical level for us. We have to think through how do we build partnerships and how do we work with our nation partners as well as our allies to be ready for the crisis and conflict. That, that also means that we have to think through how do we partner with the interagency as the Department of Defense, and we also need to think through how do we, depart, how do we partner with industry and academia. When we're talking about making clarity from chaos, and leveraging emerging technologies, unless it's an offensive for capability, so an offensive cyber would be the example for us in 16th Air Force, unless it's an offensive capability, it's unlikely we're the innovators. Unlikely. Um, I don't have the budget that the industry has or academia has or necessarily the expert. I have some real good experts on that other side. Like I said, innovation in the offensive cyber realm were probably your go-to. Um, but I want to be an early adopter or a fast follower. I want to be in that portion of the adoption curve. If we wait too long, we will not be there. But I, so the way that we look at doing that in 16th Air Force is we think, how do we pilot toward an outcome? Now, I said pilot, and everyone in the room like, yeah, you got 52, 3.3 pilots. Um, true, we're good at starting them. We're not good at finishing them um, as we go forward. But that is one of the areas that we're looking for is a how do we bring technology into our environment and leverage it quickly um, at that part of the adoption curve. So when we're thinking through that, this is the way that we came forward and when they were talking about that partners and allies. And so if you, what you see at the top of the chart here are our priorities within 16th Air Force. As we're, parts in the, you know, as we're operating with this information technology and what we're driving our airmen to do to support the Joint Force and the CFACs and the Air Force. So the first one is growing readiness. The readiness state that we've had uh, for our posture during, since 9-11 and, and to the fight in the, in the uh, Southwest Asia was fantastic. We were well organized to do that mission. As the national defense strategy has, as we've been talking about this pivot, like General Barrier mentioned for a while, national defense strategy is very more, even more on point lately. And our leadership, our political leadership is also very, very pointed about, hey, we're going to have to have strategic discipline as we move this pivot to the Pacific because the growing concern about the PRC is our pacing threat or challenge. So that's where we're looking about how we grow our readiness. We're an employed in place force. So what that means to us is 80, we, we are employed doing our mission today. We're not just for crisis and conflict, but we're trying to, we're looking to carve out about 20% of our airmen's time to enable that training and to enable that connection with the rest of the United States Air Force. Through flag exercises, um, through other wing level exercises, we're looking to make sure that our airmen outside of 16th Air Force understand the power that comes from the ISR enterprise and understands the power of the IC that they have access to at the operational and tactical level, but they may not understand how to connect, and that's our job. The next one is strengthening our resilience. This is resilience of our airmen, this is resilience of our capabilities, and this is resilience of our processes. We have to have all three. We talk a lot about the resilience of our airmen as they're working in this very dynamic world. But the, the capabilities need to be able to survive a, an effect upon our weapon systems and recover. And when we think about the folks in this room, our networks need to think about how do we absorb losses of capabilities in our networks and then bring itself back up online. 
That one's driving modernization. I've talked to that already, but this is how do we bring in, modernize, again, our capabilities, modernize our training, and modernize our processes. Maturing information warfare. So this is a competition-based framework that we're developing in 16th Air Force. And it's, it's centered on the, on the principles that you heard during the video. The first one is um, reveal and conceal. This is the first half. So reveal, we think about that is what capabilities, what ability to operate as a military force is the United States Air Force going to reveal in competition? We reveal to deter. We reveal to show the adversary these are our capabilities and this is what we can bring to the fight should you choose to challenge us in a military manner. The second one is conceal. We conceal these high bespoke and high investment and high impact capabilities that if they were to become known, the adversary may be able to blunt their effectiveness. So we conceal to defeat the adversary if we're, once we enter in a crisis or a conflict. The next part that is we expose. We expose for advantage. We expose to build alliances. We may expose on a public in the, outs, in the open in information environments, or we may just expose the information we have to our adversary, um, to our partners and allies, like we mentioned before. And then the fourth one is we disrupt to deny the activities that the adversary is trying to do right now. You saw the image on the F-22 Raptor and the J-35. We are, we are disrupting those activities, whether it's removing adversary, malicious cyber actor infrastructure, removing means to spread disinformation or misinformation by external um, forces that are looking to seeking to influence our military members or our population um, through the information environment. We're partnering together with that and the interagency as well. So that's how we're thinking about maturing information warfare. And then you come back up increasing combat effectiveness. That's the purpose of the United States Air Force. It's the purpose of the Department of Defense. We are here to engage in combat should someone choose to threaten the interests of the United States of America or our partners and allies. So that's what it's about. In the middle is the Phoenix initiatives like, okay, how do I support that? How do I get with industry? How do I partner with academia in a way that's more than having good interactions at a conference? These are valuable. Um, but how do we close on that? How do we bring that technology in? How do we become early adopters? And so that what we're trying to do there is establish frequent type of engagements with outcome-driven activities that we can learn by doing at a scale that enables us to, to be ready to go and scale if we find something that's important. When I have an industry engagement, the first question I ask is, help me write a better, help me write a better requirement. I don't necessarily know what the technology could do. Help me write a better requirement. Now, we can't write a requirement that just says, you know, Kennedy Incorporated is the only one that can do this thing. We all understand that in the room. But I'm looking forward to understand how we do that as we're going forward. The other one with academia, we're looking to how, we, how do we partner together so we can get um, with students and the professors that have lifelong experience in the technology, and we bring the use cases. And so we can explore that activity, and whether it's a CRADA or whether it's other type of partnership with them, we looked at how we can leverage those with academic institutions. And then finally, it's the labs and the R&D. So Air Force Research Lab, we have a great strong partnership in the Air Force, but if, when you think about the other national labs that are out there, that is also a, an untapped potential within 16th Air Force that we are proactively working um, with those lab directors and we're, we're placing mid-career officers with them to help bring that back in and then we're looking to partner with them where, on real operational challenges. The, the advantage of, of labs is nothing new to the room here, is I can partner in a way, they have clearances, they have facilities, it's fast. It is very fast. It's much faster than if, if we have an academic institution, unless it's one of the FFRDCs that are already there. So that's what we're looking for. Now, that's in the innovation front. The next one is the talent recruitment. Um, anyone that wants to join the United States Air Force, see me after. Um, but uh, as we're going for it, and we've raised our recruiting age to 40, if you're not tracking, so that brought a whole bunch of you back in. Um, but we have to find a way to bring in, to make folks excited about um, service in the Department of Defense of the United States Air Force. And that is really the key. Now, I'm, industry, that's not, it's really the academic engagement. That's the number one objective. We may get some other innovation, R&D, access to faculty, great partnership, but it's really about showing a viable path, whether as a civilian or a uniform member, at first service in the United States Air Force. And then it's the global research and development that industry brings um, that we may not have within the United States Air Force or the department. So that's how we, that's how we look at this initiative as we're thinking through uh, where 16th Air Force sits. And the, and the outcome, the idea is we're gonna drive mission outcomes through deliberate engagement. 
So coming to an event like this, we have members from our Air Force here, they will have um, specific use cases in mind and it's being driven through our technical director and all the technical directors across um, the wings. One of the things that I've asked them to look at within the Phoenix Initiative is mission resilience. And so when you think about mission resilience, we've broke it down into there's three ways that we think we could disrupt our mission um, and that we need to look at it. And well, the three disruptors are adversaries, weather, technology. And so we've broken those apart and looked at where do we perform. Since we're an employed in place force, except for the aircraft that we fly, and we leverage networks and physical locations, we're like, okay, what, what are some of the, the weather trends and patterns that could? The reason we brought this off at Air Force Base is one of our, our places. Off at Air Force Base got hit with a 500-year flood about four or five years ago, maybe a little more, wiping out large portions of the base. And we're thinking through, okay, where are we postured in ways where, you know, river patterns, base, uh, where we've built some of our facilities, how do we look at that? Adversary disruption, where is the adversary trying to go? How could the adversary disrupt so we don't have a single point of failure in our enterprise? That includes JWIC's resilience as part of that. And then the next portion that we look at um, there is uh, the technological disruption. You saw it in the video at the beginning of the conference. You know, where could quantum come in potentially? Where could AI and ML come in and disrupt our mission? We wanna leverage it, that's the portion for the global R&D but how do we posture ourselves to see where, where could this disruption, so we're, we're not on the backside of the curve, uh, on the late majority that's adopting the technology that we're on the front and we're seeing where adversary is in that curve as well. So next slide. So in closing, as we think about the future environment, we talked about um, and how we bring chaos, um, or sorry, we bring some clarity to chaos. We bring lots of chaos. Um, how we bring uh, some clarity to chaos. It's, it's important to be ready to leverage the technology. But when we bring in the technology, we're constantly asking how do I arm or how do I train 49,000 airmen to use the technology? And how do, I, how do I posture myself and how do we posture our airmen to do that? So that's one, anytime we bring in the capability, whether it's a network capability, a cyber capability, an ISR processing, we think through that portion of the, of the challenge at the same time. Um, because we're, without that thinking through that, we're not going to get to the posture we want. But it's highly, highly necessary. I just want to come back. The three things, my opinion, that we need to do to succeed as we look in the future in the information environment as well as any kind of great power competition or potential for moving into conflict. One is air, allies and partners, which we talked about. And we talked about the power of information of girding that up. But it's really about a level of interdependence with partners and allies that we have not done since World War II. The second piece is resilience, mission resilience, all portions, airmen, processes, capabilities. And the final one is how do we leverage data and the information it provides to gain information advantage and decision advantage as we look into the future operating environment. So I really appreciate the time today to, to kind of let you know a little bit about the great things that 16th Air Force is doing. Uh, thank you to DIA for, uh, for the invitation, and uh, please have a fantastic conference. Thank you.